Okay, beekeepers. Here's the honest truth about acetic acid. Once you spend the money to buy the vaporizing tool, buying the acetic acid from a non-beekeeping supply company because Look how much Man Lake is charging for one pound. One pound, $40, $48. And here is a 10 pound bag I got off of Walmart online for probably $30. So you can buy this stuff online real cheap. So it's actually cheaper to treat with acetic acid than it is to buy any of these products in here but here's the catch oh, and I also wanna if you if you don't have this book here I recommend you buy this book I'm promoting it just because it's the best book I've ever read about beekeeping I'm not getting any kickbacks by promoting this so, Natural Beekeeping by Ross Conrad is a very good book, and he'll explain to you everything about these treatments. And acetic acid is an organic treatment. It's healthier than these other toxic synthetic chemicals that people are putting in their hives. But here's the catch. Acetic acid does not kill varroa mites in the cat brood. So, I went online last year. It was my second time to use acetic acid just to see what would be the best method or treatment plan. And I found three times every fifth day, two times every seventh day, and then one time when there's no brood. So a lot of my colonies will have brood all the way up through December. So I waited until basically the end of the year, end of December, before I did the last treatment. And I checked the bottom boards a day after I did treatment, and it killed a lot of varroa mites. And this stuff does not does not kill any honeybees. Um, I have a video on about using uh, too much acetic acid, too much time. It, it did almost kill my honeybees, but they came back to life. It was col colony number uh, number seven. And the reason why seven had a hard time because the queen kept laying all through fall, and they ended up with a varroa mite issue. And by mid-December, they were almost gone. But when I did the treatment, I uh, didn't do enough time because I forgot how much time to use. And then I did too much time. And, and it it stunned them a little bit, but they came back to life. And that colony is saved. Now, I have uh, I have nine years' experience with, uh, with honeybees. And this is what I did first. I did uh, Kirk Webster's non-treatment. You know, that may work for somebody that's not around a bunch of commercial bees. But I managed to get by four years before I, I was almost wiped out one winter. So then the following year, I tried Foley's Russian Bees Queens. And I bought some packages to put these queens in. And these packages were full of varroa mites. So I thought, okay, we'll see how these queens do when they start producing broods. See if these broods are resistant to varroa mites. And they weren't. I almost lost all of them. I had like seven bees. Well, actually... I ordered over 40, and half of the queens on my second order, half the queens were my second order, and they were almost completely dead. <coughs> out of 27, out of 27 queens in this box, six of them were dead on arrival, UPS next day air, and then a couple weeks after I put the queens in the colonies, majority of all the colonies had queen cells, so the queens died after I put them in the, in the colonies. So I don't recommend buying queens anymore. And the first order was a little more successful, but of... Approximately 20 colonies that I actually had from 40-something. I only ended up with seven colonies the following spring because most of them died during the winter from varroa mites. Okay, so Russian bees, that's a scam. It's not true. that They aren't resistant to varroa mites. So then I tried formic pro, formic acid the following year. I had like almost 25 colonies, so I did one, one bucket here. Remember they used to sell these in buckets? One bucket did one treatment for one year, and then I tripled the following year and I had about 75 
the first time I used formic acid, it seemed to work just fine, you know, and it killed like 10% of my queens and 10% of my honeybees, but I was okay with that at the time. And then the second year when I used it, again, it killed 10% of my honeybees in the hives. The first time you, I did the double 10, you put that, that pad in, and the next day you'll notice a lot of dead bees at the bottom of your uh, hive. And then when you... When you're done with the treatment and you go through and you check your colonies, see if they have queen. Like 10% of the colonies had no queen. So it's hard on your bees. It'll kill 10% of your honeybees and your queens. And then a month later after I was done with the treatment, I noticed my bees were still dying. And I checked. And sure enough, there were varroa mites in them. I have these videos on YouTube on my channel. You guys can go back through and look at them. I have proof. The formic pro formic acid did not work the second time I used it. So then I quickly, I quickly bought this acidic acid in November. This was, uh, I do believe it was 2019. And I used that in November and it killed all the varroa mites. But my colonies are small because, because the Formic Pro didn't kill the varroa mites. But I managed to get most of them through winter. So then the following year, I used this. And I pretty successful at it. But I wanted to make sure it, was, it did a little better. So I did this... Uh, I did this treatment here, and it, I had 150 colonies, which is real difficult. You can't do every all of them in one day, so you only can do so many a day. So doing it three times every fifth day and two times every seventh day, I ended up taking the whole month of September treating my colonies. And then, like I said, at the end of December, I did the last treatment. I did all of them in two days. So there's uh, Tennessee bees on YouTube claiming that uh, silic acid's weak. It doesn't work. You know, um... There's something about Americans, you know, America was built on lies. We lied to the Native Americans, and we stole everything from them. We, li we lied about the Spanish-American War. Um, government and mainstream media are liars. They're currently lying about what's going on in Ukraine with Russia. Uh, the U.S. has been putting weapons over there and arming neo-Nazis in Ukraine for many years. Uh, 2014, McCain went over there, and that's the time we overthrew the democratically elected government. Our CIA works for the corporations. They go around and they, uh, they instigate all these coups and try to topple democratically elected leaders that won't cooperate with the U.S. Because the corporations control our government, and our government controls the people. They basically keep people under control. So here's, here's basically uh, what's going on. The 1% are the owners. And then the government, the managers, and everybody that's not in those top two, basically your your livestock. That's all they see you as is livestock. Um, if you don't believe what I'm telling you, go on on YouTube, look up Michael Hudson, and Chris Hedges. Uh, America's in decline, and within the majority of of your lives, people watching this right now, um, you're going to see a very steep decline in the United States. We will no longer be the empire of the world. So. Think about these companies here. This is Man Lake's catalog. They're in the business of selling you products. That's their business. So there's a lot of people on YouTube that are getting kickbacks for promoting certain things. They want you to buy this. They want you to buy that. And Better Be told me a few years ago that I should be rotating my mite treatments. And then I, I asked, I said, well, how do I know what the commercial beekeeper used that year when he brings these bees back into my area because I don't use any treatments in spring to get rid of varroa mites because my bees, majority of them, don't have any varroa mites in the spring. I don't get them until midsummer when the commercial beekeeper brings his bees back. And then that's when they start building up in my colonies and they have to do treatments in the fall. So she didn't have an answer for that. So they're in the business of selling you products. Uh, and then the other thing here before I finish this video... Uh, I have, I had 150 colonies a few days ago, but I have some queens that are dying. Uh, the first year when I create a new colony, it builds up. And last year I tried putting, uh, some, I took the queens out of some of my older colonies and made a, a good size colony with that original queen and I stuck in new queens. So I did skip one year and I used the new queen from that year to make honey. So that worked out pretty good, but majority of them. First year, I make the mating nuke and they get a new colony when the queen gets bred. And the second year, they produce honey. And the third year, I like to save my old queens to see how long they live. I use them for my mating nukes. Uh, if I have a failed mating nuke and I have an old queen, I'll take and put an old queen in there and get that, that mating nuke restarted. And then also, 
You know, the pollen substitutes on the market, none of them are non-GMO. I use a... I use this Domino cane sugar during the winter. I have a video on you on my YouTube channel showing how I make these. I make these uh, chunks. This is strictly Domino cane sugar, nothing else. No corn syrup, it's just syrup. And you add the sugar after you get the syrup going at a certain temperature. And you, and you put it on your counter. And then you take a knife and you score it. And you make these little uh, strips. That way I can put them in here and feed my bees without actually having to get in the hive. So my bees do really well on that non-GMO sugar, cane sugar from Domino. But your pollen substitutes, look at all the stuff that's in them. High fructose corn syrup, sugar, what kind of sugar, they don't say. Plant protein products, grain products. Um, if you understand what GMO is, genetically modified organisms, They've modified these plants in the United States to handle unlimited amounts of chemicals. They absorb the chemicals. It's in our food. And yes, the chemicals are in your body right now. The, the, the bees get the chemicals in their hive. They get them in their, it's in their food. You know, the honey, the pollen, it's in the wax. It's, it's in their environment. It's in their system. And they don't live very long because of that. You know, they die because of the toxic chemicals. So I couldn't get a non-GMO pollen substitute and I know this is not going to be healthy for my bees but I couldn't come up with a non or uh, yeah non-gmo soybean and get the person to mill it down to flour I couldn't do that in time because I got so busy with bees last year but I'm, I'm working towards doing that in the future I want to get away from this uh this gmo stuff it's not healthy I don't use corn syrup in my feeding my bees that's not healthy either but read this book here and it's the best book I've ever read. I recommend you read it, okay? Thank you.